Good day everybody! In today's video we're gonna find out how you can read a balance sheet and what a balance sheet actually is. So stay tuned! Hi guys and girls and welcome back to the channel. As stated in the intro to this video, today we're gonna talk a little bit more about the balance sheet and understanding what a balance sheet actually is. Is okay so that you can make intellect intellect smart investing decisions. In essence, I did choose for this video an Apple balance sheet. Okay, because I love Apple. I I owe, uh, own a bunch of Apple products, and I think it's a good balance sheet to go over. Um, so to start, before we go into b Apple balance sheet, I want to tell you a little bit more about the balance sheet in general. So it's a part of three financial statements. Uh, income sheet, cash flow sheet, and then of course the balance sheet. Basically, uh, the balance sheet is the, the sheet that you take to the bank and then everybody sees how good a company you are or you're not and basically are showing how much you're worth or you're not worth. So that's what you see from a balance sheet. It gives you total value on all of your assets and total value on all of your liabilities and it kind of balance its itself out so because uh, at the end of the balance sheet you can see the difference bet between the assets and liabilities and are you standing good or not as a company so that's it in essence that's it but the uh, the assets and the liabilities are separated in, in a few different categories and those are the categories that you can see on an apple balance sheet as well so let's just go uh, through each and every one of them so that you can see uh, and understand what each of them actually means. So at first we have cash and cash equivalents. It's actually a number. Uh, this is a balance sheet but before we start. It's a balance sheet from uh, 29th of September 2018. In the last quarter that Apple reported. And then we have four years back as well. But we, were fo we will focus only on the 2018 because there is no need to go back in the history because, you know, it's not unnecessary. Uh, because the numbers are different, but the things that they are reporting are basically the same. So cash and cash equivalents is the number of is amount of money that Apple as a company or any other company, in this case Apple, has immediately. So anything that can be turned into cash like straight straight away. Okay, so it's cash in a bank. It's also something that you can sell immediately so that you can get that cash. Okay. Uh, then we have a short-term investments. This here is something, uh, some kind of investments that the uh, Apple board decided to invest in, but for the short term, something that um, you're planning to hold less than three months. Okay, one to three months stops. Uh, that's the short-term investing. Any kind of a holding on of, of any stock. Okay, so then we have net receivables. Net receivables is anything we sold as an apple if we if we were apple and but we still didn't get money in so we sold something to i don't know best buy if you can buy a best apple at a best buy but best buy still didn't they have a postponed payment and they still didn't pay those uh, that inventory that we sold to them as an apple okay that's that's the net receivables that we are, we are still waiting on that on that money to come in and show in our uh bank account by the way, I know uh, one thing to say here, those are not millions. Here is in thousands, okay? All numbers, as you can see here, up, all numbers are in thousands. So actually the net receivables for Apple are around $50 billion they have outside waiting to get sent to them, okay? Uh, at least that's what they reported at the last quarter reporting. Inventory, that's like a small number for an Apple, which is actually a good sign because that shows that Apple is very well organized and uh, they have a small amount of money in inventory. All of this shows almost $4 billion uh, in stock. So they have Apple iPads, uh, AirPods, uh, iPhone XS, uh, iPhone SS, you know, whatever. They have a very, considering how big of a company they are, they are handling their, their inventory very good because inventory is nothing but the strained cash. You got to sell it to get cash in and then with cash you're king. You can do whatever you want to. 
but you need to, so that's why when I said it's a good sign that company is very well organized because they're getting rid of the inventory very quickly just if you take a look at the last few years the inventory was uh, at the highest peak of 2017 before that the inventory is around two billion dollars and currently it's even lower and getting lower and lower since the 2017 so which that means that that is very good in my opinion other current assets is anything that basically not listed in the above in uh, above categories okay that can be i don't know any, anything anything that you can get you know uh, that you hold uh, that can have some kind of a cash value but it's not net receivable it's not the inventory it's not the investment and it's not cash so that brings us to the total current assets in amount of one point what is it what uh, 132 billion dollars one 131.34 billion dollars it's a big as number and the good sign is that it's, it's been growing apple is growing in the current assets since 2015 and i believe uh even before 2015 so that brings us this is like current assets that gets us to the investment part okay so because these are total current assets which are kind of short term now we have a long term investments which would be uh, any any amount of money uh, that you're planning that you invested and you're planning to hold it uh, for a longer period of time which would be like more than three months years one one two five years so they apple invested over 170 billion dollars in it property plan and equipment is basically uh, money that you have trained in a, in your offices in your buildings in your uh, equipment machines that are producing the you know iPhones MacBooks and whatever it is everything that Apple uses and owns not rents but owns uh, as it's at as their machinery it's it's stated here so they own around 41 billion dollars worth of equipment and properties goodwill will, will um, goodwill well that's the brand name how valued the brand name of apple actually is and i'm not sure why didn't they put why they didn't put anything in here uh because in 2016 and 15 they did report over five billion dollars and i think that there is some will here but i think it's also one of the uh weirdest numbers because you can put whatever number you want here i think intangible assets uh well, in fact, that's a big thing because it's patents is uh, something that you cannot touch. OK, so but it holds value towards your company and the patents would be naturally one of the most important things in the tech industry. Then we have accumulative amortization. That's not an important. You're not going to use it anyway in the uh, looking at a balance sheet and you're trying to uh, make a decision. Are you going to invest or not? And then we have other assets, which is basically anything that uh, you we didn't mention in above, which brings us to the to total assets is over 350. So it's 365 billion dollars in assets in assets is what Apple is currently uh, holding so a lot of money there a lot of value there and that's kind of the first part of the balance sheet okay so let's get to the liabilities part in the liabilities part we have accounts payable that's the first thing so as we have cash and cash equivalents in the assets part and receivables then we have accounts payable this is the first thing that we gotta pay like as soon as possible or as soon as they come as those payments come due so basically that's like uh electricity bill like uh, pay for the inventory for the companies that were building our products any other sort sorts of bills etc etc so that's the accounts payable that are about to be due right now or they're already due short current long-term debt is the debt that uh basically uh, you have a lot of cash, but you have, you know, you want to buy and take that from a money uh, from com uh, from banks because the uh, capital capital is so cheap. So you decide to take some kind of a short term debt that you got to pay back in like short period of time, like three months or lower. And you want to use that money for investments or for something else. And you don't want to spend your cash because the capital is so cheap 
Apple currently has around $8.8 .8 billion in short-term debt. Other current liabilities would be, well, very similar to the other current assets, anything that's not listed in accounts payable and short and long, uh, current long-term debt. So which brings us to the total current liabilities of $116 billion and $866 million. Uh, which brings us to the long-term debt, which is basically a debt that you know you gotta pay it, but long term it's not due and uh, it's not due yet. It will be due in a few years, long definitely longer than three months, years to year, years ahead or maybe you know decades ahead. Depends on uh, what did you agree on, what kind of contract have you signed on a debt uh, with the bank. And then we have an other liabilities, which is anything also similar uh, with the other assets, uh, anything that's not mentioned in the long-term debt, the short-term debt and other current liabilities and the invoices and uh, accounts payable that are about to be due. Uh, negative goodwill would be something that Apple definitely doesn't, doesn't have, would be a, a brand name or some kind of a value that people are running away from and this is basically a number that you put in here minority interest and deferred long-term liability changes is something that apple's not been reporting and i don't think they're important for your understanding of a balance sheet which brings us up to the uh 258 total liabilities of an apple and un until guys uh assets are bigger than liabilities that's a good sign for any kind of a company okay then we also have in the balance sheet stockholders stockholders equity uh, how, how much common stock you have what are preferred stocks uh, of stockholders do, do they have etc etc also not important when you're trying to decide is this uh, is this company going to be a good investment or not and this kind of brings us, you know, uh, to a total stockholder equity number, which is basically the difference between $365 billion, $725 million in total assets and uh, $258.578 million, $258 billion, $578 million in total liabilities in Apple. The difference between uh, these two numbers gives us a total net tangible assets, basically uh, how, how much money have I coming in and how much money do I owe. And if I'm in positive, that means that I'm standing very, very good. And I think that when you take a look at the figures that Apple is, has been reporting, Apple is standing very, very good and it's very rich and cash rich company. And with that being said, guys, uh, I want to invite you to click that like button. Also, make sure to click that share and subscribe button, especially if you're new and if you like this content. Uh, which brings us to the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm also going to record uh, videos on understanding of income statement and a cash flow statement. I mean, income sheet and a cash flow sheet. So make sure to check it, check those out as well. Again, thank you very much for staying until the end of this video and speak to you soon. Bye-bye.